in the session, if you'll stand the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'd all remain standing for a moment of silence, please. I'd like you to keep in mind the eight police officers, including T Tucson Sector Border Patrol Officer Manuel Alvarez, who died August 11th, and the nine firefighters who've died in the line of duty since our last board meeting. quick housekeeping items coming out of executive session uh, I'll make the first mo the motion to on item one to and this is this is a motion bill okay the motion to execute the agreement uh, with Jackson Lewis and have the attorneys proceed as directed is there a second second any discussion all in favor aye. 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 on item two uh, that will be for the chief to proceed as directed in executive session with funds allocated from contingency not to exceed five thousand dollars. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I said execution of the vote. Yeah. Um, all right, Chief. Board, public, would like to welcome you to today's uh Board meeting. Sorry, we're a few minutes late, but thank you for waiting. It's always exciting in our our business when we get to see new firefighters and a promotion occur. Uh, we've had uh, some new hires as of uh, 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 this first shift was just this week, right? This is your first first shift, yeah. Still on your first shift, okay. So you finished your first tour, and you're on your first tour. So it's exciting times. We have a third one who wasn't able to make it today. Um, and we have a promotion as well for the Fire Prevention uh, the Bureau. So we'll talk about those folks, and uh, it's just exciting times. We'll have three more folks coming to you next month as we expand our, our uh, folks as well. So actually a four, because it's a third one. There'll be four people next month. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Richard Wynn. He was raised in Apache Junction. He's a uh, graduate from the Apache Junction High School, 2007. They get younger and younger each time. <laughs> In 2009, he generously enlisted in the United States Navy and served our country, where he took on roles of increasing responsibility during his four years in the Navy uh, in Aviation Maintenance Administration. He was stationed out of San Diego, California, on board the USS Boxer and completed a Western Pacific deployment, contributed to the support of all aviation operations and several ships uh, for overall ready, uh, mission readiness. Received the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal for streamlining and refining the USS Boxer's aviation maintenance capabilities. Upon transitioning from the Navy in 2013, he enrolled in Mesa Community College where he went on to achieve his associates in applied science and emergency response operations in May of 2016. In addition, he's obtained a certificate of completion in firefighter operations and continues to build that foundation and learning skills to become a successful firefighter. Over the years, he's volunteered as, uh, through several social service providers in his local community and assisted citizens with keeping in touch uh, with their proper resources to live a healthier and happier life. He's married to his wife, Josie, who's here today, and they have uh, a very proud, beautiful little son named Gideon. Where'd he go? Oh, right there. Oh, <laughs> Gideon, what's up, buddy? Uh, so HR does babysitting on the side. If you'd like to, <laughs> if you'd like to consult, uh, she does have a, a fee schedule. She'll be glad to provide for you. Um, but he's very excited to provide uh, service to Sedona Fire District and are looking to contribute uh, to make our district a success, so we're excited for that. Before I call you up to pin you, we're gonna talk about Nick Granada right over here. Nick Granada lives in the Flagstaff area where he's worked as the forestry technician for four seasons and is also an EMT uh, at the Guidance Center. Nick soon will graduate Coconino Community College and has met all the requirements already for an associate's degree and he will receive his degree in, in December 2016. He plans to continue his education at NAU with a bachelor's degree in emergency uh, scene management. He enjoys Lake Havasu where he spends time on the water, fishing, and time with his family as well. He's here with his parents and his brother. He likes to do carpentry, metalwork. Metalwork, let's get him on the, 
metal work. We got a guy to do metal work. We need some help. And, uh, and helping with other projects where he, where he could do some work with his hands. He's thrilled and honored to be part of Sedona Fire District team and really looks forward to serving our community. So with that, I'd like to call the two of you up to swear you both in, if you wouldn't mind. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to have you guys stand. Come on up to those two. Come over here. I'm going to kiss each other if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 So, so board, as I mentioned, we have a, a promotion as well this this month. Um, next month, we'll have actually more people. We'll have two promotions next month as well. Um, but with this today, we've had a, an opening in the Fire Prevention Bureau for uh, for some time in our Community Risk Management, as we call it. And so uh, we're honored to be able to invite Rick Evans uh, to be our next fire inspector. So Rick uh, began his employment with Sedona Fire District in 2013 as a shift coverage reserve. At that time, he was a full-time employee at the Cottonwood Fire, uh, dis uh, fire Department as uh, the fire marshal and as an engineer. Later that year in 2003, he was hired here at Sedona Fire and began working on B-Shift where he spent the last 13 years of his career as a firefighter paramedic. It's interesting to note that prior to his experience in Cottonwood and Sedona, Rick actually started in the fire service in 1995 and was, was instrumental in the formation of the Tucson Fire District and uh, also worked in the Williams Fire District uh, as well. Correct? I'm sorry, transpose those notes right. Uh, he actually served in many uh, facets of the fire district. He's actually told me he's trying to work his way down. He actually was a fire chief at one time, actually, even in... in <laughs> in Tucson and, and, is, and is happy to be a firefighter paramedic but is also interested in this challenge being back into fire prevention where he's had lots of roots over the years. Since being hired, Rick has taught at many symposiums, can create, created successful programs in the fire service and even earned a few unit citations. Uh, most recently, there was a significant car accident on 89A where him and his crew responded to in 2015 as well as the slide fire where, which he was part of. Uh, when looking at Rick from, from some other angles, from his, some of his peers, to talk about Rick being a, a cost-conscious person who's uh, dialed in our facilities, the janitorial supplies down to the, down to the ply of the paper that we use, <laughs> and the number of paper on the roll, um, and got it down to, he's saving us tons of money, substanti substantial <laughs> dollars is what I've been told. So we appreciate that type of uh, approach that he has to, to being given a job and taking it to heart. 
Um, his former supervisors have said that he's got a can-do attitude and kind of the person who always uh, is looking to improve processes. Most recently, uh, he has been working in the, in the CRM division as an inspector while on light duty. And uh, when we started discussing the potential in the future, he decided that it might be a great opportunity to work in, in fire prevention again. And so he's graciously accepted the position as fire marshal. Uh, fire marshal? <laughs> fire inspector. <laughs> a wrong badge. That was quick, man. <laughs> he was really worried about working his way up the ladder. I was already thinking he's there. So, um, but we're going we're gonna to give him the fire inspector badge today. And uh, he's going to see what he can do to work his way up the ladder <laughs> going through. He's, he's up to the challenge and does a great job. Rick is here today with his wife, Susan. They're both avid skydivers. And uh, so we're excited for, for Rick to join uh, the fire uh, prevention CRM division. So with that, I'd like to have Rick come up. <laughs> but I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I pledge to uphold the missions and policies of the Sedona Fire District will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of Fire Inspector of the Sedona Fire District to the best of my ability to help do so. Congratulations. <laughs> so, so board, it's a big decision going from from shift after all those years and 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 coming to the to the days world that we work in. But we're excited to have have them added to our team. As I mentioned in a few of the comments, uh, you know, his former supervisors and things that they've said, um, he's already bringing a lot to our, our CRM division. Um, we we've got a an opportunity to to fill the uh, the extra opening, which someone will be uh, we've an offer out and we'll be. Uh, processing that application with an expectation of a start date of uh, November 1st for the next person in the, in the fire prevention. So uh, we're excited for that. But we're really excited to have you on, on the team. And uh, we look forward to you uh, adding to what's already a great program. So thanks for that. And, and thanks for willing to step up. Big decision. So. All right. Congratulations to everybody. Were you at four today? Were you the one they were making haul hose all up the hill? Oh. Poor guy. Full gear. 90 degrees and humid. You're going to do fine. He didn't look like he was having any trouble. <laughs> Somebody be pulling more hose tonight. <laughs> In the rain. All right, back to the not-so-exciting stuff. So we've got a consent agenda. I'll ask the board members, anybody want to pull anything out of the consent agenda, or we will go ahead and make a motion to approve it. <coughs> If not, I'll are we good with, with item C? Do we, are we good with that? Or do we want to pull C and talk about it? Um, I guess it's up to the board if they want to pull item C and discuss it. You're fine with the kind communication? Of how the financial matters are being handled with that uniform purchase. That would be item The uniform. Or C4. C4, yeah. Sorry, C4. Yeah. C4. If you guys are fine with the communication, that's, it's, communication it's fine. Unless we've got any, anybody mm -hmm. wants to discuss it further. Okay, I'll move to approve the consent agenda as submitted. I second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. They're all leaving you. I'm not sure what you did, but they were there. <laughs> I started talking about boring stuff. Uh, public forum? Uh, no one has wished to uh, speak, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, financial reports. Yes, uh, we're, Mr. We're Chair. We're looking the other direction now for financial. We used to look over there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is a temporary 
move. I'll be over there Let's next time. Right over here soon. <laughs> Ty, do we want to yep, allow perfect. guests to, to exit or are they want to stay? So, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, you have the July financial report in your packet. And what I'd like to do th uh, today, this being uh, my first financial report, is one, go through the financial report as I would on a normal board meeting basis. And then afterwards, um, I'd like to go through the financial report that's included in your packet so we can discuss it. Um, I could explain the various reports. We could discuss it. And also, really what I want to find out, again, is importantly, is the financial reports are the board's financial reports. It's, it's our reporting to the board on the financial status of the district. I've included and ensured, and, and Sandy before me has included everything from a statutory requirement is in there, but also I want to see from the board if there's things that they want to, you may want to see differently. So we'll go through that after I go through the actual July financial report. Okay. So on the July financial report, you'll see that uh, tax levy revenue was 73829 uh, Budgeted for the month was 62521 So we were over by 11309 And I will point out that overage is due to timing on historical collections. And when we base our budgeting for tax levy revenue, we obviously anticipate that we're going to collect close to 100% of what we budget. It's just purely than a matter of timing on when that revenue comes in. And so we look at that historical collection rate and apply that as what we use as our basis for the monthly, month by month budget on our, on our uh, property tax collection. Non levy revenue is at 240,360. Uh, budget is 180,463, uh, or again, a favorable variance of 59,897. Uh, and that was mainly due to our ambulance revenue. I'm working with uh, staff, both ambulance and uh, Pam and finance on trying to get more timely reporting of the revenue to the board. Um, historically, it's been there's been a little bit of a lag, and we're trying to work on getting that a little bit closer. So when you do get the monthly report, you are getting an actual of the previous month's ambulance billing. Personnel expenses were at 713995 which was under budget by 260218 The reason for that is in, Ju in July, that first pay period that actually gets paid out in July is really June's payroll. And so in order to report our financials accurately on an accrual basis, we actually accrue that payroll back to June. So you'll see that catch up then in June of this year, um, but you'll we'll see for this first month, you'll see that kind of favorable variance and that'll carry forward as well on our year to date till we get to the, uh, the June uh, 2017 uh, financial report. Uh, vehicles and equipment are under budget at 39,715. Uh, utilities and communications at $5,341. And then managerial expenses were at $120,531, uh, which is over budget by $51,780. And there's a few reasons for that. And again, it plays into the timing on our accruals is there was a lot of prepaid expenses, both in software and memberships and uh, training that was paid essentially in last fiscal year and was accrued as a prepaid expense. And then this year, we posted it as an actual expense in the period that we're realizing it in. One of the things that I'm gonna work through over this year with the district is really identifying our trend and our monthly expenses. So as we develop budget come next year, we'll develop a true 12 month budget um, and thereby eliminating, or should say reducing some of these month to month variances that you'll see through this month. Um, Cause it, it, historically there's been an annualized budget prepared and then that number has been divided over, over essentially 12 months. Um, but what I want to do is get this board and, and get the reporting to more of a true month by month projected income, projected expenses based on timing of payments or historical trends on when are those periods that we do spend more in utilities versus less in utilities. So, so that's really what kind of some of our goals are for the financial reporting side of things throughout this year. Uh, percentage of expenses, and actually b before this slide, starting next month will be a year-to-date slide that shows where we're at from a year-to-date revenue and expense standpoint, but obviously with uh, July, there's no year-to-date. <laughs> it's the same as the, the monthly report. Uh, percentage of expenses, and I like to include this, this slide so not only the board, but the, but the public and, and other people see all the public that is, is in attendance today, um, where we spend our money. Um, and so they really understand the the financial operations of a fire district, that all of all of what we do from a financial perspective, or I should say the majority of what we do from a financial perspective is dictated by personnel costs. 
Um, and as you can see for the district, 81% of total expenses for the month are personnel. And we'll continue to see that trend through the fiscal year. Um, followed by you know managerial at six and operations at 5%. Finally, um, I like to include a year over year cash position slide, uh, which also includes um, a summary of current assets and current liabilities. This does not include fixed assets and long-term liabilities. This only looks at uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, and, and payroll liabilities. So as you can see, uh, we ended the month at uh, just over 3.3 million in total cash compared to 2.8 million last year. Um, Assets, uh, 638,704 in total other assets compared to 969,669, uh, which was primarily due to uh, receivables. And then as you can see, the liability balances at 322,098 compared to 541,023. So year over year, we're actually in a stronger position. We've increased our cash and we've decreased all of the current liabilities. So year over year, the district showing a strong financial position from a cash flow perspective. And with that, if there's any questions specifically on um, the July report, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, I'd like to kind of dive into the board packet um, and go over that a little bit with the board. I'm going to move over here. So in your, in your packet, you were given what I'd like to call the, the blended financial report. I tried to... Um, maintain some of the current reporting and practices that, that the board is used to, in addition to provide the reporting that, that I find is useful to other clients and I find this useful to other boards. Um, so as we go through this, again, like I said in the beginning, there's, there's things in here that are, that are statutory requirements, but by all means, if there's additional mm -hmm. reports the board would want to see or if there's a report we could eliminate, um, I'm, I'm more than, again, these are your reports, so please please tell me. Uh, so my report will always start off with a cover page, which will give you a summary of obviously what is included, um, as well as any key highlights or any key points that I feel that needs to be brought to the board at board's attention. So any significant variances in budget to actuals. Uh, it, it, here you can see that we moved 862,000 from the capital fund to operations. So all things that are larger kind of material dollar amounts that the board needs to be um, aware of. When we go on to uh, page two, you have a balance sheet. And um, I believe this is you know, a little newer report than what you've seen in the past. Um, and what this is showing is a summary of those, of those cash, those current assets and current liabilities for all of our active funds. So any fund that essentially we have transactions occurring in, we're showing these here. The only fund that's not included in this, and I believe it's the 99 fund, which is um, the fund that basically the audit adjustments are put into for purposes of preparation of the financial statements. Those are done, those entries are all done on an annual basis and the board sees that with the annual audit and they're not changing through the year. So currently we've left them out, um, still going back and forth on, on whether or not we'll include them or not going forward. And by all means, if the board has any preference on that, um, I'd be happy to, happy to hear that. Going down uh, to page Four, um, historically, I know the board uh, the board packet included bank statements and summary and uh, reconciliation reports. Um, we find that in the and with a lot of other clients that kind of clouds the board packet. It makes it rather uh, a large document as uh, already a large document. So we consolidate and report that on one page as a summary for the board to see the reconciliations, see that they have been done. Um, and then by all means, if board board member ever wants to see the actual statements and reconciliation reports, those are always available in the finance office at any time for the board member to see. Page five goes into the monthly budget report um, where we have the July budgeted numbers, the activity and the variance. Um, and then one thing that will change um, going forward is um, again, in, in attempting to make a hybrid, I, I made a misinterpretation on percent used versus percent remaining. So going forward, um, that percent used is based on the monthly budget. That's why it's, there's some large percentages in there. Going forward, we'll do it based on the entire fiscal year. So if we're at 8%, you'll see that, we, that it's trending at 8%. So 
Um, another suggestion I'd like to make, and um, if the board doesn't have um, any heartache with it or any, any uh, objections to it, um, I, I also find that a consolidated one page, maybe two page summary of revenue and expenses by major categories showing unders and overages is, is very effective. It allows um, individuals that are not financial, financially savvy and even individuals, individuals that are financially savvy able to look at a snapshot of the financial per, per picture and see areas that are either over or under budget. And if questions arise, then dive into the detail instead of having that detail always kind of up there and, and up front. By all means, we want transparency. But at the same time, I think maybe giving a summarized consolidated report will be a little cleaner and easier for the board to see and understand. And then also we follow it up with that explanation at the monthly board report on any major variances. And then obviously if that's not uh, acceptable to a board member, they could always get that detailed report. Um, before, before I leave today, I'll make sure I leave business cards with everybody so they can reach out to me um, directly. And I do also have um, a district email now as of today so I could be reached that way as well. If not, you know, Pam always has the ability to pull financial reports as well. So that summarization mm -hmm. would take the place of this current document Seven. Yes, is what mm -hmm. Dave's speaking to. So there's no objection to yeah, that. That's that sounds great. Okay. Great. Um, if we scroll down to page, pages 12, 13, and 14 are, um, again, my, my hybrid on a board report. <laughs> um, but after talking with the chief and talking with Pam um, and, and, and you know looking at it, I think what we're gonna do is remove these reports, these graphs, um, because we are doing the graphs in the PowerPoint. Um, but again, if, if a board member feels differently, I'd like to continue to see the graphs, I, I have, will be happy to keep them in there. Um, hate to do this, but I, I would like to see the graphs in okay. there. To be able to reference them when I'm not in the meeting. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay. Then we will keep those in there. Okay. Um, and then page 15 is the fire billing summary grants and special projects. Because we are now going to report on the profit and loss statement activities in all funds, it's going to essentially replace this report. So Pam's going to help me out on this by having everything in into um, Tyler before I go and pull the reports, and then that way we'll be able to run that report in the accounting software for you instead of having to manually generate a second report, um, which will cover these these items. One thing it won't do is, um, as you can, on the 9-11 fund, that has been a um, historical total collection of revenue and total expenses over two periods, which you obviously won't be able to see in the future. But again, in discussions with the chief, it sounds like this is a one-time special project that will be going away. So we, we should not see the same issue again. Um, Gabe, yes. in terms of those graphs, the ones that you've just shown us are the ones that I would like to see. You would like to see those, those graphs? because okay. you had dollar figures, which was very helpful. Okay, perfect, then I will that make that change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, page 16 is a asset addition and disposal schedule. Um, which will give will give the board a picture of and identify any assets that have been added um, within the fiscal year as well as any assets that have been disposed of in the fiscal year. It gives one kind of snapshot as again the board makes the decision on whether to acquire new assets or dispose of new assets and I feel including a, a monthly running total summary so this will obviously be updated throughout the year um, of what we've done as far as those asset or capital acquisitions and, and disposals is, is good for the board to see from a, a transparency standpoint. And then we have <laughs> pages 17 through 20, 24 is our disbursement report. So in the past, I believe you've gotten um, these bank reconciliation reports and things of that nature. This is giving you a, we're, we're eliminating the bank statement and the reconciliation report to give you just a full disbursement report. Here's every transaction that has gone through our accounts, whether it's cleared or not, in the month. Um, and obviously that allows you to see any transaction. If you question a transaction, you're able to be able to call out it directly and we can get the backup and the information on that transaction for you. And then finally, um, the last page of the document, page 25, is the 12-month cash flow. 
And again, the purpose of this document is to show the board uh, where we start from a cash position, what our either actual cash receipts and cash disbursements are, and then our ending cash position, or as you can see for the rest of the fiscal year, what our projected cash receipts and cash disbursements are. So this is purely looking at things from a actual, a projected and actual standpoint through the year. So you can see and look across that cash position, that third line down throughout the year and see where we're gonna be at projected from a cash position. Obviously, as we finish a month, I will update that, that column with the actuals and you'll see if we overspend a month, what it'll do to that cash balance um, or if we, if we do much better than what we anticipated, what that'll, that'll, how that'll increase that cash balance on a month over month basis throughout the year. Or if you recall, that's uh, the financially required, you know, statutory required rather piece. And you talk about the, the budget as we currently have it versus the, the 12 month that we have now. And so we're gonna see some variances and I blinked, I missed that, but if you, did you explain that? Yes, yes, so when I was doing the PowerPoint, I, I oh. mentioned that, that we are gonna work on developing a true more, a more true 12 month budget so we can eliminate some of those month over month variances. I mean, they're still gonna occur. I mean, so that you can't get rid of. right, you can't get rid of them, but we could, if we know that we're gonna have all of our prepaids hit in July, we're gonna show that in our 12 month budget, in, in a true 12 month budget. So, which helps that cash flow piece, but also just that, that the preparation piece. So we're talking about when we decided to buy the engine and pay for it in cash July 1st, we'll know, you know, better, do we really have the money to do that now? What's the cost of doing that? Things like that as we, we process through the years. It's a good time now to buy the next, you know, fire truck, ambulance, whatever in this month. And it's, it, it, so it'll be an improvement when we actually go to the 12 month budget throughout the whole organization versus just slicing the pie up in 12 pieces and kind of going, and you'll see these variances now going, wow, we're way over, but we're not. And that managerial one, right. we're not over for the year. We're not tracking that we're gonna be 50% over budget for the whole year. It's just the one blip and we'll come back down, so. With that, um, unless there's any other questions, that concludes my report. <coughs> nope, you. that's great. Appreciate right, it. Very thank detailed. You. And like the new format. Okay, Chief. All right, board, with the fire chief's uh, report that you see in front of you. Oh, no, oh, we're, no, we're not. That's a new, <laughs> new policy. <laughs> Sorry, good sign or bad. Uh, <laughs> sorry, go back, so yeah, go back and make a motion to, uh, or uh, need a motion to approve for financial report. Yeah, I, I move to approve the July 2016 financial report. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, Bill. Okay, Chief, now you can. All right, so we're getting our money's worth out of Bill today, keeping us on track. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Bill. Keep us, uh, keep us out of trouble, and my apologies for missing that board. Um, see, we had 378 calls for the month, uh, a, a busier month, um, uh, and overall we're, we're trending uh, a little bit ahead of last year. You know, we'll probably get close to 4,500 calls for the year, as you see there. Um, pretty standard uh, assortment of calls. Uh, as you see the um, significant incidents, uh, as you recall the last board meeting when I looked like a drowned rat, thank goodness the <laughs> video system was not working last month. I look much better this month, by the way. Um, we had a considerable thunderstorm move through Sedona and, and we talked about that. So we had a, a structure fire, we had a, a, a swift water rescue that uh, we took eight or nine people off of uh, one of the uh, uh, trailheads. Um, and multiple EMS calls in a very short time. I wrote an article in the paper that you may have seen it well as discussed that and I tried to really highlight the fact that there are many folks that just that do think nothing happens here. It's a very small town with butterflies, rainbows and unicorns. And uh, while that may be true in many ways, there certainly is a significant amount of risk in our, in our uh, jurisdiction and this is not an isolated incident that's happened. This is the one time, remember that day in 2016 we had that, that day? You know, that's, this is just a, a regular day. In, in many cases, it will be forgotten by our folks um, uh, in no time flat because at the end of the day, it was just a busy day. Um, so uh, we ended up with $100,000 worth of loss on the, on the fire uh, damage there and crews did a great job managing the resources. Um, we were taking resources from an active working fire and sending them from that and realizing that people stuck 
needing rescue trumped some of the other resources we needed there and we actually took them off the fire to move them to this other call and you know so that's the, the managing of resources and the, and the prioritization that we're, we're having to do on occasion so that is a significant incidence for them you know I will share that I think it was that well, might have been August I'll let it go we'll, we'll share the other one we had another rescue uh, at the Red Rock State Park that was pretty neat but it'll be on next month's I, I believe it was August it was my birthday as a matter of fact so um, in the grant section, you'll see that we did get a denial letter for our uh, uh, Governor Highway Safety Grant for uh, battery-powered extrication tools. So uh, a $33,000 grant we applied for, we did not get, unfortunately. Um, we've been pretty successful in that, that arena, and uh, unfortunately, they got, it, got a thank you, but no thank you letter. So uh, that's that. We'll have to figure out how to fund that project forward in future budgets or reapply for the grant in the future. Um, the call station uh, breakdown, as you see, is pretty standard. Donations, we'll talk about the 9-11 stuff in a little bit, but it's, you know, dropped off considerably, if not completely. Yeah, it's pretty much done. Um, so that's that. Community risk, we talked a little bit about, you know, the continued uh, success they've had with some of their, their um, uh, increases in, in their uh, efficiencies based upon Rick being there in, in many cases, so um, now we'll be there permanently, and that helps just subside on a couple things there. So you see a few of their, their things they got going. One of, of interest would be that they're a, a piece of property, Sedona Ranch on Oak Creek. It was formerly known as La Mera, which is down on the Lower Loop Road. Um, how many how many plots were there initially or now? There was approximately, I think, about 38 to start with, which were a little pricey, and so uh, they've increased it by a about to 45. Okay. This is one of those subdivisions that kind of started and kind of got developed right around 2007, and then the downturn hit, so it ended up staying pretty and much vacant. This is the property where the where the uh, bridge is actually at, as well down there. So uh, they've, they've subdivided that up and gotten eight more lots out of it, and, and then that's beginning to move, as we're seeing and we continue to see, um, you know, very very busy with the the plan reviews and the and the inspections. I mentioned to the chief the other day that I think I saw his house come across the table. It was a house out in Aries, 1.8 million. It was not my house, um, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a, yeah, had a good time. Um, I got another one today um, down in uh, Cross Creek, 1.2 million. So the, the, the economy piece of that is good for us. The uh, uptick in our uh, assessed value will increase, especially these million dollar homes as it goes and, and everything definitely has an impact. Unfortunately, we see about a two-year lag time for some of these houses to really make the rolls and actually see an impact, but but that's it, it's favorable going forward. Definitely better than we've looked in the rearview mirror for many years before. Um, so that is that. Training, um, you know, we continue to do our, our, our high-risk uh, helicopter training, quarterly training with DPS, so our, our folks are, are qualified to be able to utilize that and be proficient, and it's a, a continued... Um, high risk piece that we got to make sure our folks are ready at the highest level and so they continue that and it's time consuming and, and not uh, inexpensive but it's highly valuable for for the folks that, that we rescue and for our people that are working in that environment to be highly proficient so proud of our, our helicopter rescue team uh, we saw a few of the folks here uh, I think I just Jessica was here who she's uh, I think she's a helicopter tech now and, and uh, we got six people in, in total uh, two per shift that are qualified for that um, a few folks, uh, Captain Rippey, has got his Wild uh, Land Engine Task Force book uh, signed off, so he's eligible to go out now. That's a big thing for us to be able to have resources available and ready uh, when they're called. We actually sent an engine out today to California, and uh, so engine boss uh, Captain Pat Ojeda uh, took a crew out to California, and as I talked to Buzz, uh, he said they were told, drive to the border, call us when you hit the border, and we'll tell you if you go north or south and see where you're at. They, they're just pre-staging pre, uh, folks. As I see the California guy not his head, I know that route. I know that program. I know where they're going. So there's a couple <laughs> substantial fires right now in, in California, like a couple huge fires in California and uh, devastating to the homes and stuff. Um, and so uh, um, we have, I'll just talk about Wildland right now, and that's uh, uh, we have these folks that just left in a Type 3 engine. We have got folks uh, in Idaho at the Pioneer Fire in an ambulance. We have one single resource. There's a dozer boss, and I don't remember where he went. I, I didn't even see his orders, but he's somewhere. 
um, maybe in Idaho as well. We had folks just come back from Montana or Wyoming. I don't know, those are the same place to me, but uh, they're not the same place. I'm sorry for anyone that <laughs> resides there. I know you're a former resident, um, Montana. Uh, but anyway, uh, we had some folks out there at a significant fire and, and Battalion Chief Coyle was uh, assigned as a single resource structure protection specialist at the um, Lava Mountain Fire, I think it was called. And uh, he sent some pictures to us. He had some pretty impressive uh, tasks to, uh, to achieve by, by being a structure protection specialist, um, as well as uh, Todd Miranda, who is a, a single resource. They're actually doing some division supervisor work. Um, him and his division, not him single-handedly, as I tried to give him credit for, um, they did some pretty intense firefighting for a few days and, and, and actually kept fire from entering what um, was a, a couple hundred million dollars worth of residents that were not burned because of the, again, the, the he called, they call it type one firefighting. So that's kind of the real deal stuff. And uh, they were integral to that part, our, our members of our group. So just cool stuff to hear these guys come back and, and be part of it. Um, and we had Sean Foster was out also on that fire as well as uh, logistics or something. I forget what he was assigned. So our folks have been out. It's been a very busy wildland season. Um, you know, we, we wrapped up last year with a 220 or $240,000 revenue this year we're already at 25,000 that we've collected with another something out we've probably got another 25 to yeah so it's uh, it, it's you know lining up to be we'll probably have already met our our budgeted number by by uh, august uh, end of august for sure so that's good bad good for us bad for those others um and then a bunch of folks finished up their captain's task book which is a a process we put through for a long time. We were trying to get accomplished the, these task books. So this is a, fire, a firefighter engineer who wants to be a captain, works on all these tasks that are in this task book and they get signed off and have to show proficiencies, much like the engine boss I spoke to, they have to do all these different things. So it's modeled after the, the forest service piece. And we've got uh, uh, now Captain Josh Wells, who's already a captain, uh, engineer Ryan Fisher, uh, firefighter Greg Everline and firefighter Matt Fisher have all completed that and that was a lengthy process for us to get done, implemented, and now our folks are getting through that, which means that now they're on the, the captain's list and act up and, 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 and show those proficiencies and we've, we've put them through the paces, which is nice to see us be done with that. So proud of those folks to get that done and uh, continuing the rest of the training that we do. Um, I know that a few of us were blessed to enjoy Glendale in July, so I know a few board members that were there as well as uh, a few of us, including Betty, that attended either Arizona Fire Chiefs or uh, Arizona Fire Districts Association for a week in Glendale, and that was a blast. And uh, it was hot, and Gabe and JBG were there as a sponsor as well. As you know, during the month of July, we did have a, a fire, the Point Fire, which was burning, and we saw from, from town and, and had some, some significance to our community. I will tell you that the initial reports is the fire was burning for a few days, and that Friday afternoon, we had a downdraft, the winds picked up, and that's what we saw. It wasn't a lightning strike that was recent, it was a couple days old, but when that downdraft came down the canyon, it kicked up and, and really started moving that fire. The initial thoughts were that let the fire burn, it's okay, it's a safe place, before that downdraft came and really lit up, and then it began, let's look at this. And so that was a Friday. I believe on Sunday, they started inserting folks into the fire and began taking care of that because they realized that the danger of all of that up on top of the rim there and the mesa um, would be detri detrimental in my mind. I guess it's on the proper too, but um, uptown. And so they had to take some pretty evasive maneuvers to get that fire under control. Uh, we had an ambulance a medic crew up there that all the crews had to be inserted by helicopter on and off the, the hill. Um, there were some escape routes, but it was a, it was a pretty um, significant or potentially significant event that our, our folks were involved in, but our partnership with the Forest Service and all those involved, um, all the air assets that were flying overhead and doing all the drops, they were out, I believe, pulling water from your neck of the woods. Uh, oh, I saw them. Yeah. yeah, so. Overhead. It, yeah. It was it was a real yeah, fire. Folks you know, swimming pools, I think. A couple hundred sure. acres at the end of the day, but it, it, it was definitely a, a significant event or could have been a significant event if it got down into a drainage 
and then took off towards Jack's Canyon or down towards you know the chapel there. So, so an example, I guess, of the partnership. A thank you letter, sweet and short, much better than my report, but um, <laughs> there was a lot of significance there that deserves some attention, um, and it was great to see that partnership. Thank yous there, just with the, uh, the the typical great work that we do in our uh, everyday life, and it's nice to get the thank yous, and uh, so that's there. As it relates to the rest of my report, I'll share with you the um, Cottonwood Public Safety Communication Center, um, and Buzz isn't here, but we've, we've changed, uh, uh, Assistant Chief Pichera helped change some of the focus of our meetings and 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 the uh, um, just how streamlined where we were at on things. And so we've had some significant improvements in our communication internally or within the group. Um, the action items that are being identified and handled, uh, things like that, are, are, are I'm, I'm impressed at the, the quick process that we're, or progress we're making in that, that realm. And we continue to work at, at all the other parts and pieces that, that go with um, operating a communication center as a subscriber, as a people doing the telecommunications piece of it that we do, or as, a, as the operator part that they're doing. So, so good progress, a work in progress. It will be a work in progress, but I like, I like where we're at and, the, and the, the trajectory we're at. I talked about wildland fire activity. Certainly on top of that, we've had lots of rain. So we are in very little wildland danger around here. However, we still have lots of dry lightning. And if we get a, you know, that we saw lightning this afternoon as we we're in our exec session. So it's pretty wet and things won't really go anywhere, but we could see some small starts and things like that happen. But they're, they're, they're not gonna move because it's so, so wet at this point and uh, aren't of much concern for our folks. Um, I will jump to the 9-11 uh, committee and I'll let uh, Dave speak on this. If you'd like to say anything, if not, I'll, I'll take over where you leave off. Well, I'll touch bases on it for, uh, for what we've done recently. Uh, we're gearing, gearing towards our dedication date. Uh, all the aspects of a dedication are, are falling into place. Uh, everybody has a piece of the pie and mine is uh, about five or six pieces of that pie, but we're getting them all done. We thank you dearly for them, and they're <laughs> unbelievable. But, uh, thank you. Yeah, everything's come together. Uh, the monies have, uh, uh, as we've seen, have, have slowed down, but we're at that point where we have uh, enough to do uh, what we need to do for the ded dedication. Uh, the plaques are are done, but not quite mounted yet. Mm -hmm. uh, landscaping uh, enhancements uh, are forthcoming, and. Uh, Right now, we're just gearing up for the actual, you know, how is this actually going to take place? And I think Chief probably touched bases on that as far as the agenda type of thing. But uh, no, everything's coming together. It's, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's uh, going to be one heck of a sight. So to springboard off of that, uh, Dave has done a yeoman's job of everything. We've can you build me a podium? <laughs> I can probably do that. Can I build you a stand for our bell, like this one? And he's had it done like the next day with a, a, a prototype. So I just have to call you out, Dave, for, for stepping up way above and beyond, not only just doing the work, but doing it at an exceptional level. So I, I think uh, we got a, 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 double, a double bonus having you as a great board member, but your skill and talent is being uh, utilized every chance we get, and we appreciate you saying yes all the time. I had a text message last night, here's an idea I could do, just say yay or nay, yay. <laughs> and uh, so that's getting done as well. So there's just, it's, just, it's great to see. The agenda for the event is it's going to be a 12 o'clock lunch, so we have a, a free community lunch that we're going to put on to invite folks to come out, kind of an open house type feel for, for come and, and open up our fire station to our community. Say thank you to all the great folks and have uh, some, some light, light lunch sandwiches and, and that type of thing. Um, we've got uh, the Sedona women who are, are volunteering to, to provide that, um, uh, the volunteers to serve that and clean up and cut the cake and serve the cake and all that stuff, so a great partnership there. Um, we've got uh, your, your uh, a standard honor guard. We've got a national anthem. We've got uh, uh, maybe some FDNY folks that'll come. Sedona Police Department will be in, engaged as well. Um, we've got the uh, Arizona Rangers involved in parking control and, and traffic control issues, things like that. Um, it's a, it's a, a full-scale event. We're gonna have a, a Assistant Chief Pichero work on a um, uh, IAPs, uh, incident action plan. So we'll have all that kind of formalized. This is a, is a good practice event. Um, he's not here, by the way, because he's at uh, a conference, uh, uh, International Association of Fire Chiefs uh, conference. He, he left this morning and has meetings and things like that from his 
duties as he sits on a couple boards. And so uh, he does send his love and misses all of you, wishes he could be here. He says he's going to watch the board meeting on tape, so he'll find out if that is true. He'll <laughs> comment on that, keep that between all of us. Um, but uh, so, so he's working on that. And, and I think short of uh, you know the speaking parts, we'll have the committee chair speak. We'll have the board chair or his designee speak from the board's perspective. Um, I will uh, likely be emceeing. We'll have a, maybe an FDNY person speak. Um, we may have a, uh, a person whose uh, mother passed away in one of the, the f that was on one of the planes. Um, she's in town or will be in town and, is, and, and may be willing to speak, but not sure. So that's, that's up in the air at this point. But just another vantage point and perspective. Um, we're shooting to make this about an hour ceremony. We'll have two tents, one for dignitaries. Trisha's taking care of all the invitations. Um, so we've had uh, little luck at this point with any of the elected officials, um, a couple denials, um, but we've got a few more out there that are, are out there. Um, so we'll see if anyone's able to make it from uh, the, uh, the electeds, if you will, that are outside of the board and, and city type folks. Um, we've got invitations out to the other folks in the community that would make sense to, to invite and, and things like that. So we're planning on a 350 person event, could be more, could be less, um, we, we just don't know. But uh, that's kind of what our, our target is for the event. Um, we're going to have two tents, as I, I mentioned, to kind of keep if it's a hot day. Um, well, so we asked Dave to set up air conditioning. Yeah, we're going to have Dave. He hasn't asked him that yet. So once I'm he gets these it. other jobs I'm building done, it. <laughs> he gets these jobs done, then we'll get him on the next couple critical tasks. Um, and so uh, um, we'll have the food and everything inside. It, it's going to be a great event. I don't know if there's any questions, thoughts, ideas from anyone on the board that you may have on the event. Certainly speak now or reach out to one of us. Um, but we think we'll put on a first class event that, you know, and this is our last kind of hurrah. The next meeting will be after the event's over. So I'm capitalizing the, the public that may watch this to please come out and join us. Parking will be in the Jewish uh, Community Center and the uh, uh, Christ Lutheran Church. We do have an overflow parking. I will ask anyone that is able to walk and provide that opportunity to maybe park down at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. It is about a block walk, but the more people that are able to walk and willing to walk would just free up more spots for those that are, are less capable uh, in those other two closer lots. So uh, that is everything. And I just I think the committee's done an awesome job. We'll, we'll recognize them at that event, but I think uh, we certainly do need to appreciate those folks that have stepped up, raised uh, you know $88,000 or something. Um, we do expect that by the time we do the landscaping, the you know, the, the parts and pieces for the event, there will be a, a pretty close to zero budget uh, left. So that is uh, uh, an impressive piece for us to be able to accomplish that. We just got a, a, a videographer uh, that's gonna do a production actually piece that will create a video after it's all done and do all the production work as well for that and do the photography for it. So uh, we'll expect to have snippets ready. nice so uh, any questions on 9-11 all right um, I have to say before I forget um, invite you all you'll see something shortly but Captain Paul Linfer is, is, uh, is officially retiring his last tour will end on the 29th the morning of the 30th and he'll have a walkout ceremony 9 a.m. on August 30th here at station number one and he's put uh, many great years I'll share all the the great stuff but we do appreciate Paul's uh, dedication to the organization and uh, commitment to Sedona Fire. He's, he's started as a, as a volunteer and worked his way through uh, the rank of captain. Um, and uh, it was great at his, re at his and do you want to share his uh, comment at all at the, at the pension board hearing? Do you remember it? Or I'll put you on the spot, but what he thought he would do if he could do it. Um, I can, I can. I, you, you no, no problem. I, <laughs> you're, you're so good with your words. I'll, I'll, what she was going to say. No, uh, Paul <laughs> gave someone a chance to say a few words at the, at the end of the, to the pension board, and, and he just said, you know what, I, I, I've been here, I've been through a lot. It's been an interesting ride. I wouldn't change a thing. I've done, I wouldn't change a thing that we've been through in the last, you know, 20 plus years he's been here. And uh, um, I thought that was a pretty neat statement to make, especially through the times he's had and, and seeing those 20 years of, of growth is, is, and, and good times and bad times. Um, it, it, he said it wouldn't change a thing. I thought that was a pretty, pretty cool statement to make. So we wish him the best in his retirement. Um, he'll still be working as a nurse here at the Sedona Emergency Center, so we'll get, still get to interact with him on a regular basis. So that's, that's exciting for us to be able to still see him and, and keep that connection to him. But we wish him the best in his retirement.
and uh, certainly invite all of you to come to the, to the walkout. Wildland activity I talked about, shared services committee. I'll, I, I just got a text from Terry. We're trying to put a meeting together next week, so we don't have much in the hopper for you to report unless you got something I don't know about, but um, we are working on getting a, a meeting together shortly here to talk about a few different items that are out there as it relates to shared services that, that are some fun and, and neat stuff that we're involved with and some other agencies are involved with that we're not, but we're you know, starting to kind of branch out. Hey, this works for us too. This works for us too. What could we do? And and so we want to have that meeting soon, so we'll get that, that uh, note out uh, and get that meeting soon. Midgley Bridge ADOT update. I want to let you know that Chief Pichur and I met last week with ADOT. They are, uh, as you may have read in the paper, they're, they're ready to start that, that, that project shortly. Um, Corey, you were at the meeting at the city. Mm -hmm. um, they've actually worked through um, their procurement process or whatever they, they need to do. I found a, a better, a better, and that's the right word, but not as much of a chain link, but as a smaller opening smaller in their, grid. yeah, uh -huh. so they'll create a better, oppor a, a better safety opportunity nice. for us as some of our concerns were. Right, we well, were concerned that people could use the wider wire um, openings to climb up and over, so that's great. So, so that, that change is being implemented. We talked to them about how we can create a better Demogra or, uh, geographic issues, um, logistical stuff. They're certainly working at deterrence to make it very, very difficult, which is, I think, the best we can do. Um, we met with their engineers as we talked about still needing a potential to access the bridge for a, a high anchor point in cases where we do have to um, rescue somebody who's been injured down um, at, the, at the creek down there, which we do have quite a few visitors that, that, that recreate down there. Um, so they're, they're looking at that to, to provide that for us, which is very nice to see them working at, at engineering that piece for us and understand the importance. So um, us and Coquino County Sheriff uh, Search and Rescue met on that topic and, and they're working on a, an engineering plan. I thought I read in the paper they talked about maybe starting shortly after Labor Day or something. It was pretty soon. It was pretty soon. So yeah. they, they didn't commit to that as their plan being like we're going to start in three weeks um, at that point, but that they're, they're ready to go. There's, there's certainly some processes that ADOT goes through that I know nothing about and they just need to get through all their hurdles but they are fairly close to being ready to install that and they thank you for your support and interest in that safety piece so um, I don't plan to report on that anytime in the future other than you'll see it when it's up and unless you have some other questions on that so you know I just um, uh, did a back road drive uh, from the town of Oracle all the way uh, back home and went over Roosevelt Reservoir, and there was a big bridge with that very same kind of uh, extension uh, grading wiring up, up above. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting that obviously it's been done somewhere else already in our state. Probably for similar reasons. Uh, thank you. Um, hiring of firefighters, so we obviously, your, your generous uh, support has provided an opportunity for us to uh, increase staffing of firefighters, uh, one per shift. We have, uh, we're excited to, to tell you that we have three folks on board. Uh, they are uh, anxiously awaiting their, their orientation, which starts on September 12th. They will spend two weeks in their orientation. And then we are uh, using this orientation we just finished up with, their orientation to really streamline what we do in an orientation process. We've, we have ample data of what we've liked and haven't liked, what's worked well from the feedback from the, the folks on the, on the ground. Um, and uh, we look forward to in improving our, uh, our orientation process. That might mean increasing it in time. It might mean there's just a couple different things, or lessening, whatever it may be, or just refocusing what time we spend with them. But it's exciting. So we'll have those on board the 12th of September. They'll go through two weeks and they'll actually be on board just before October 1st. So each of them will start a couple days. One might be after October 1st based upon the schedule, but the first date would be the 20, like seventh, the first firefighter would start on shift and then finish up the rest of that month and continue on. So we're excited. We've got some good candidates, we believe, and uh, they're anxious to be here. I don't think I have anything else board on my report. I thank you for indulging me. For the election. For <coughs> oh, do I have that in there? Did I miss that? <laughs> Yes, SFB Fire Board election. So at this point in time, although I didn't check today before the meeting, 
uh, there, the deadline was August 10th to have filed to be on the ballot and we had no candidates other than the two incumbents, Mr. Ernster and Mr. Soto, uh, who have uh, expressed interest. So we do have another week for official write-in candidates to apply to, to be a, an official write-in candidate and then whatever the hurdles are for them to get on that. I, I'm not sure I didn't get a good answer as to what those hurdles are, if any. Um, but we have another week, and after another week, if no one does apply for that, then, the, then the, there will be a request to cancel the election, and then that funding that was uh, earmarked of uh, $50,000 would be able to be, uh, you know, not spent on an election. So while we certainly appreciate the, the process that allows everyone to um, apply and be interested in running for this position, and if that was the case, there were interested parties, that would be a wonderful thing, and we'd have a, a process to take place. But we certainly appreciate the two of you being willing to continue in your your uh, servant role as a, as a board to our community. So thank you for that dedication. Best of luck in the election if it happens. There you go. All right. Anything else, Patricia, that I missed? We'll, we'll get someone from the county if it is canceled, and then they'll take a they'll take action accordingly. So. Other than that, I thank you for pointing out that I missed something. I was in a hurry. I was excited, trying to get you done early. I'll All turn right. it over to the chairman. Last item, uh, legal fees, $1,800. Very gentle start to the year. Thank you again, Bill, for your wise counsel. Uh, Gary? So um, I guess you guys had a little show when you were up at the uh, executive session today? We did. Looking out the window? Okay. I kind of, you know, when you think about what Chief talked a little bit about it happened over at the Wyndham Resort where they had a lightning strike, I kind of call it flashbang. You know, you see the flash, there's virtually no, no time between that and the, and the sound. And so as a result, um, we've had an awful lot of those. I've had some in my house to the point where I've literally turned the computer off, turned the TV off, unplugged a few things because it's just been dancing right here. It seems a little um, out of the ordinary. I mean, I think a lot of us have lived here long enough to realize that it hasn't... Um, while it does happen, it just seems to be, or maybe I'm just getting older, but it seems to be occurring more often. Um, another example that we had is we did have one where it hit a, hit a home, ended up actually blowing out the drywall. And that's typically what it will do in many cases. It really got into the wall, blew the drywall out. And uh, fortunately, nobody was hurt, and fortunately, there was no fire um, in that. So, uh, you know, a couple things is that as we talk about it, and we're out there, and, and I think we heard about the young man that lost his life up, at, uh, up in Flagstaff because he got impacted. and so. I think we kind of think, where is it safe to go if, we were in, if we're caught out in something like that? And I think the first thing we need to think about is do we want to even go out on that type of a hike? You know, I like hiking, and sometimes you might look in the morning, everything's kind of nice, but by the middle of the afternoon, if you're not careful, we've got some lightning happening, and you need to be proactive. And so when you think about it, you know, I looked up a couple myths, and one of them was, you know, you should just crouch down, get low. And I go, in reality, that's kind of a waste of time. You need to get somewhere where it is safe, like in a building, in a hardtop car, somewhere where you can get away from that. Just remember that if that lightning does hit the ground, it can travel quite a distance. Um, and you kind of see that when people cluster together. I think we've seen a few of those reports. So, you know, this year it seems to have been a little more active and, and that, so we just need to be a little more proactive. So when we're out hiking and enjoying that, we just need to, you know, think about twice, think about where we're, where we're headed, look at, the, look at the weather and see what those clouds are building so that we can have a safe event. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. We're adjourned.